The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN headquarters in St. Petersburg, Florida. It's Wednesday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 30 minutes into that trading day, and we got markets starting off to the upside. Dow Jones right now up 247 points, trading at 26,209. We get the S&Ps up 25 points, trading at 29.24. NASDAQ up 81 points, trading at 8,029. And the Russell up about 12 points, trading at 15.10. We got some earnings this morning. We got Lowe's crushing it. They are up big. Target as well. Let's just jump over to those two charts this morning so you can check it out. We're on a five-minute chart on the Thinkorswim platform right now. Lowe's up more than 10% out with their earnings at 6 a.m. We'll dig into those numbers in later in the show. But right now, up almost $10, trading at 107.85. And man, you want to talk about crushing numbers. How about Target? Up almost 17%, reached a high of 101.50. That's an all-time high for Target, as they seem like they are well-positioned to rebound in that retail sector, up about 17%. Quite a number for sure. On the flip side, you had Toll Brothers last night with their earnings. They are in the premium housing market. They come out with their earnings last night. You actually get a spike up to 38.72. Toll Brothers backing off down almost 4% right now at 35.48. And to jump through some of the equity markets, the indices, there's your Dow 30. We've kind of been hovering right where we are since after the open. NASDAQ 100, pretty similar action. S&Ps as well. And crude. Above $57 briefly this morning, back under that level, and gold trading at $15.1274. We got Fed minutes coming out at 2 o'clock today. Should be an interesting day with lots going on. With that in mind, let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade at Thinkorswim. Folks, right after this program, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, Fast Market, Kevin Hinks, Alex Coffey. Man, they break it down. You want to talk about defined risk in these markets. You want to talk about action in the option market. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. How we doing? We're doing well, man. Another day, another up market, Kevin. Um, earnings all over the place. Target, quite a number, man. We talked about it a little bit yesterday with Walmart, yeah. Amazon, and so forth. And man, Target, they really crushed it. 17%, Kevin. I woke up this morning, shook my head, said, ah, look at them crushing the market, and I wasn't even there. <laughs> you, know, you know, Tommy, this is exactly what you started your show with today. Uh, Target, Lowe's, Toll Brothers are exactly the three stocks that we covered ye yesterday on Fast Market. Right. And we went through the scenarios of all three. And really the most surprising, frankly, is Toll Brothers. Yeah. Because Toll Brothers, remember, their average selling price Whew. is about $824,000. So Ooh. these are luxury homes. I was really... That, that they're selling. They're not your first-time buyers in the two, 240, 260 range. Yes. These are $800,000 homes. It's a staggering so average. That's a really good yeah. sign from them. Yeah. And, uh, know, and then the other, uh, obviously, Target. Oof. You know, we always talk about Amazon, Walmart, Amazon, Walmart, right? We, we throw Costco in there. Very quietly, Target has, has carved out their niche as that place you can go. It's a little up more upscale than Walmart, but not crazy like some of the full price stores it's still a, considered a discount definitely uh, store and they they've put a bunch of investment into their infrastructure into their stores and wow it looks like it's starting to pay off and then lowe's lowe's actually looks like tommy it's starting to even though home depot had a blowout quarter it looks like lowe's is improving against home depot and that's why their numbers are so strong it looks like marvin ellison is really changing the culture of Lowe's. Yeah, quite a rebound, man. 11%. And, of course, Home Depot, like you said, doing well as well up near those highs. But Lowe's crushing it. Back to Target for a second, Kevin. It is remarkable, yeah. man. I mean, all-time highs. 
And I agree that they, um, in my mind, and I think in a lot of people, their brand awareness, right, that they are a little bit of a, a better brand in my mind in terms of versus Walmart, you're really going discount, you know, you're really aware of price. Right. Target, maybe a little bit of a better in-store experience, which has built that brand a little bit. But I was talking to Tom a couple weeks ago, which is why I kind of shook my head up, you know, 17%, not to say you saw it coming. But I said, man, these companies, in terms of Walmart and Target, are really figuring out that they have to compete with Amazon in terms of free delivery of some sort, whether it's one day or two day. They have to compete on price, and eventually it seems like they're going to get there, right? And it seems like they right. almost might be there right now. And, you know, those executives, they understand that they have to compete on delivery, they have to compete on price, and it looks like that they're, they're, they're coming around that corner. Tommy, look at the e-commerce sales growth of both Walmart and Target, and both of them are north of 30% earning, you know, e-commerce growth, which yeah. means, you know what that means to me? That tells me that the front of their store, right, where people walk in and buy is getting smaller, and the back of the store where they ship from is getting bigger. Definitely. And as that back of the store starts to eat forward, you're going to see e-commerce take a bigger chunk out of all these companies' earnings, and I think you got to pay attention. There's, if, if we've learned anything the, the last two quarters in the retail sector, Tommy, there's going to be winners and losers. And the winners are winning big, and these numbers they're putting up are gargantuan. That's so, uh, yeah. You know, I mean, you say it so well, not to interrupt you, man, but I said, you know, I, I, yeah. I kind of, we were having that discussion. I, you know, I was saying, you know, Walmart, they've already had their run. Not really, you know, they're still doing it, but man, they have been doing well versus Target. Now they're at all-time highs. I didn't expect them to be up 18%, though, in one day on their earnings. So just staggering what they've uh, pulled yeah, off. Yeah, I thought they'd be good. Even I didn't think they'd be this good. Right, exactly. Uh, so we Fair got enough. Fed Minutes today, Kevin, at 2 o'clock. We got yeah. Germany issuing for the first time negative debt. You actually have President Trump out there tweeting that he's upset that we can't issue um, and get paid to issue debt in the same way Germany. you got to understand that. Uh, what are you guys going to be talking about of all the things we got going on in the market today? You talked about the three stocks that are really moving yesterday. What do we got coming up in the program today? Well, today we got more retailers. You know, this time on the calendar each quarter is always going to be about re the retail sector. So we're going to cover uh, J.W. Nordstrom, Dick's Sporting Goods, and maybe if we get to it, a little L Brands. Okay. So those are the three names, but really a lot of this market, especially in the afternoon, is going to get taken over by the Fed minutes. And then all the comments coming out of Jackson Hole are really going to take over this market for the next two and a half days. Yeah, Powell, and especially as, you know, it's a, it's a repeating theme, but I pulled up this morning, Kevin, you know, you have to, I mean, the German, they were talking about the German 30-year um, bond issuing for the first time. Yeah. Uh, negative debt, right? And then you have President Trump out there tweeting even, so Germany's paying zero interest, actually being paid to borrow money. I mean, it's it's so true, man. It's remarkable. Well, the U.S., far stronger and more important credit is paying interest. Um, so that, that, of course, is going to be in the forefront. Pretty remarkable in this negative interest rate environment in terms of how Powell is going to play into that for sure. Well, Kevin, man, we look forward Our to the program. so popular. Okay, Tommy. No, what were you going to say, Kevin? Our bonds are so popular because our economy is so healthy. That's why the world, not just American investors, are fleeing to our bonds. I would agree, man. I would agree. I mean, we're, we're right near all-time highs. We're at almost full employment. And uh, you hear a lot of rhetoric talking about, listen, if you think there's going to be a recession, that could be a self-fulfilling prophecy. And it um, doesn't seem like that's quite where we are just yet, but I'll look for what Powell has to say as well. Kevin, man, we appreciate it as always. We look forward to those retailers, Dick's Sporting Goods, L Brands, the whole kit and caboodle. Folks, you saw what they talked about yesterday. You saw what they did today. Check it out right after this program. Kevin, we appreciate it, man. Have a great program. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. You too, man. Have a great one. We'll be right if back. If you're folks. not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien, and this morning I'm fortunate to be joined by our man Basil Chapman filling in for Tom. Basil, good morning. Good morning to you. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, man. How's your morning going? Uh, it's going very well. Well, actually, it wasn't going well, but you know, when you have technical issues and they get resolved, suddenly there's this the, the sun comes out the from behind the clouds. The burden has been lifted, Basil. You're free at last. You're all set, man. I know those producers. We got John and Al hooking it Unbelievable. up. Unbelievable. Al and John just worked away and we got it done. Good. Technology, man. You got to love it. So, folks, again, to recap, we got positive markets. We got positive earnings. Dow right now up 216. S&P's up about 23. NASDAQ up 78 points. To jump around to some of the stocks we touched on last segment, just rocking and rolling. Lowe's up 11%. Target, I'm sure you heard Kevin and I talking about it, Basil. Man, quite a gangbusters number. Up to 101.50, currently trading at 196, up 18%. Staggering numbers for a retailer of that size. And uh, we got Fed Minutes coming out at 2 o'clock. We so, have. Tommy, yes. I, I, if I was able to get on with Kevin, my question would have been with Home Depot and Lowe's producing such fantastic results. What would you do if you were in the Fed right now? Oh, man. Would you lower rates? Normally, you'd be looking at this and saying, wow, there's another positive economic barometer. How can I go around lowering rates? But it has to be because of the tidal wave of international uh, countries are wanting to raise money to pay off whatever it is. And therefore, there's this competition for the lowest rate. It's not the U.S. 
it's it's usually the U.S. leads. In this case, the U.S. is following, don't you think? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's remarkable, man. The story with the 30-year in Germany for the Bund, you know, for the first time issuing a negative yield. Um, and you're talking about Germany. Um, and sometimes I don't agree with the president, but I'll pull up his tweet. And it is remarkable, man, when you really look at it in terms of they're being paid. And I have the tweet up there right now. Germany's paying zero interest, actually being paid to borrow money. Well, the U.S., a far stronger and more important credit, and I agree with that, but Germany is a powerhouse in Europe. You know, I mean, an absolute powerhouse Correct. to being paid to borrow money is uh, a mind-bending experience, I would say. Well, it defies the whole belief over decades and decades that when um, the economy is moving ahead, just very... Uh, Orderly, let's just say nothing sure. fancy, but it's just moving ahead orderly. There's usually a demand for loans, and because there's a demand for loans, the price of the loan goes up. Right. So rates normally would just go up. They don't have to break barriers. They just move up steadily. Sure. So this is uh, this is defying the natural course of events for decades and decades. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why I think so often you hear the conversation, and so often you hear it. I mean. I mentioned, you know, Larry talks about it a lot in his program before this, does a great job. He put out a great uh, newsletter this weekend, Basil, just really going in-depth about the bonds, focusing. And he just made a lot of great points, and a lot of them had to do with, you know, what the heck is going on, man, <laughs> in terms of uh, how do you wrap your brain around the fact that you give somebody money and you're actually getting, you know, paying that person to hold that money instead of just holding it yourself, and then you get it well, back. Well, tell me. If there is a safety factor involved, if these are people or countries or, or your really big institutions that don't want to buy something like gold, this is just not in their vernacular, but they're used to, used to paper money, they're used to, they're used to doing things in a different way other than to do it uh, you know, through metals or buildings sure. or whatever it is, the chances are that these people are saying, we want security. We prepare to have somebody look after our money. It's like paying a guard to look after. You. But that doesn't make sense in the economic world. But exactly. it does make sense in the security world. In the in, in not securities. I mean, the security and the safety area. And that's sure. all you can think of. Sure. Um, the only thing that throws even a further wrench into it, right, Basil, is that you have the element of yeah. Now they they're all guaranteed by the full faith. And reliability of the government that you know you're buying that debt from but nothing's guaranteed so it's remarkable that you give somebody that money right you're giving them it and you're gonna get less back as in a negative yield and you're guaranteed on the faith of that country which again why is it so important for a country like Germany where it's just a, a very reliable country same thing with the US but still nothing is guaranteed when you look at even our own debt ceiling we struggle with continually to raise it now i don't think that would default i really hope that we never would because that would be staggering but folks when you're giving your money to somebody else you better make sure that you understand the underlying risks even if they are very close to zero they might be just slightly above zero and how that plays in when you're not even getting paid anything you're actually paying and what you brought up is really one of the factors that hasn't been discussed very much as far as i can tell and that is, you might be getting uh, your money, you, you think you're getting your money back, but there is even a chance right. that if there's a default, which has happened historically over hundreds of years, if there's a default, you're looking at something rather bizarre. Actually, yeah, quite and I like the expression where you say sometimes, what's the probability of a default, right? And you'd say, it's really close to zero, okay? And I would agree with that sentiment. It's really close to zero. But guess what? It's not zero. Okay, it's it's somewhere above zero, and you better understand that because there's not a, a full guarantee. Um, and the black swan doesn't know what the percentage is, right? Does it? And it could just be one tenth of it. It could be one thousandth of a percent, Basil. Right? But guess what? It's not zero percent. So that number is something that you should keep on your radar. You know, and hopefully we saw deals that maybe they push that debt ceiling out a year or two or something like that. And really, folks, it's I'm just talking about the U.S. Every country has these obligations. It's money we've already spent. So I agree the deficit is a huge mammoth problem. But the way to tackle it is not to stop paying the bills that we've already incurred. So hopefully those politicians get it together in Washington and start extending that debt ceiling because those bills have already been spent. Um, all right, Correct. jumping off that, Basil, I'm going to jump to crude oil real quick. We got 1025. We get the crude EIA numbers at 1030. Crude, quite a market as well. 
Yesterday, we got some huge action, negative and positive. Tuesday, we spiked to a low of 55.19. You actually trade from about mm, 24 hours from 10 a.m. yesterday up to above $57, so $2 to the upside by 9.30 this morning. You got crude trading at 56.74 right now. And I'm just gonna take a look, Basil, real quick in terms of what kind of premiums they're pricing into this market as we get that volatility. Jumping into crude, I'm gonna take a quick glance at even the 11 AMs. We're looking at 56.75 right now. And we have a couple contracts that line up pretty nicely with exposure to the upside from 56.75. And we're trading at 56.76 right now. So within a penny of where that contract begins at, you're paying about 20 cents in premium for the bullish side. You're gonna be paying a pretty consi um, consistent 20 cents to the negative side. And so you're looking about $40, or it'd be about 40 cents, Basil, from where we're trading at right now. And that's the 11 a.m. So you're only giving yourself about a half hour. But anytime you got oil, oil's really been rocking. It's been trading you with- know, I I, over the last couple of days, I've kind of liked oil. I know it's in a training band and it's just made a peak D in the Chapman wave on the 10 minute chart. But I, to tell you the truth, I think that uh, going to the uh, going to the crude oil daily chart, I drew this in the other day. I put in a rectangle formation between 57.42, the high of the 13th of August, and the continuous contract. Look at that. And then on the 15th, it made a low of 53.72. And I made this rectangle. I said, you know, a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. We've seen that many times. So I think crude oil is doing quite nicely here. I wouldn't be surprised if it has a little pop. Hey, and we're, up, slightly above we're up the $2. Excuse me, $2 in the last 24 hours. We get those EIA numbers when we come right back, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien joined by Basil Chapman this morning. So we have the EIA crude oil stocks at a minus 2.7 million barrels. The estimate was for a decline of about 1.9. I get the chart up here, Basil. No real reaction off the bat. We were sitting at 56.76 about. You have the market spike a bit lower. We'll zoom it in a bit. This is a five-minute bar. We spiked to 56.58, but we're within about seven pennies of where we started, 56.81 right now in the price of that crude contract as we see where we go, as we have the inventories again coming in at a decline of 2.7 million barrels. The estimate was somewhere between about 1.5 and 1.9 decline. So a little bit less crude. We got, folks, if you haven't checked out the DEN, I got all these DEN members. They're putting all that good information in there. You have gasoline with a rise of 312,000 barrels. The estimate was about a decline of 200. Um, so we'll see what happens, but pretty muted response right now so far, Basil. We'll see where we go, but 56, 74. Maybe that crude contract's just going to hang out in that box that you got. I think uh, I, you know, that's, what I, that's what I would anticipate. And one of the reasons is that uh, with the economy still acting pretty well, I don't really see why crude oil should start to decline under the 52 level. Of course, the famous words, you never know. Right. right? But I think it should hold steady. In fact, I, it will, I would not be surprised if it rallies just a little bit and they get stuck in the range. It's been resilient, um, for sure. I mean, I, I come in resilient. this... I come in this morning, it was above 57. It seems like I'm constantly lately surprised uh, to the upside almost as you added trade all the way from, you know, you have the chart up there from above 60 bucks to almost approaching 50. And then boom, before you know it, we're up $7. And folks, $7 when crude was at 50, 52. I see that C point down there, Basil, on the daily. Right. Um, and man, $7 on a $50 price of crude, folks, you're talking about, you know, 14% on the, on the price of a barrel of crude, which just is a mammoth move when you think about how much crude we use across the globe on a Correct. daily basis. But it, also, it also brings me to a point that says, if you look at this weekly chart, let's forget about the right side with the, with the monthly, but the weekly chart, it really shows you that it's been stuck in a range for about almost a year, Yeah, a, a very whippy range. But if you look at it in the context of where it had been back in 2000, October of 2018, yeah, that in the 78 area, dropping down to the 42. Whew, man, I know, right? <laughs> you know, this is really a very, very mild move over the last, certainly the last couple of weeks. Yeah. So yep. no, I, I think I, that's a good sign. I completely agree because that move, and it's when we saw the markets falling apart. So I agree, you know, as the economy is doing well. Um, you saw that really fear come into the market just, what, Christmas Eve of 2018, and that's right where you had crude collapsing with the market on economic woes, economic fears, and uh, we've seen a nice rebound from that because, man, there was really some fear as it hit that uh, 4260, which is just a mind-bending number when you think of where we are in crude right now. We're almost at 57. So, Basil, tonight you have your webinar for opening call subscribers. Folks, I'm going to check it out right now on the front page of TFNN. Basil's been putting together a great workshop. He is going to be in there with opening call subscribers from 5 till 6 o'clock. What stocks could lead the market higher after this correction has completed? He'll be in there for an hour. He'll be talking about what kind of methods he's using. And, uh, Basil, can you give uh, the listeners out there and the viewers kind of a, a glimpse of what you're going to be talking about for the hour with your subscribers tonight? So I've just retitled it with a little subtitle. Okay. And basically the subtitle, I think, sums it up. I, I just thought about it for days, actually for weeks, and then as I'm thinking and I'm looking at the different charts and I'm looking at our positions, I said, you know what? This is a market that has no rush. At this particular point, I still think that the consolidation is going to continue for a while longer. The positions we have, we have six long positions, and they're doing quite nicely. Some are doing very well. Some of them we've just issued, and I start to use dividends as one of the criteria in a certain section of our what I call a portfolio. 
because I think that this is the opportunity where some stocks that have been beaten down are really absolutely, truly great American companies. Sure. They are, they are terrific. In a zero interest rate environment, when you can start getting a dividend yield on a stock that's... That has capital appreciation. Exactly. If you believe and in the company anyway, and you're getting, whether it's 2, 3, 4, 5 percent yield, um, when you're looking at a 10-year that's sitting at 1.5, whatever it's at, um, you, that's, that's where it's kind of interesting. So f for subscribers, I've made a big deal. I've said, I don't want a stock that has the potential to go down 10, 15, 20 percent on your capital. I don't care what it's giving you for a dividend. No, right. I, want, I want to look at stocks that have the potential. It's always the potential. It never can be guaranteed to have good capital appreciation at the same time as giving you a dividend. Yeah. So that's part of my focus tonight. I that's also perfect. like to look I think at everybody wants that, Basil. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that because it is. I mean, even if you can pick a stock where... You know, and again, like you say, you can't rely on anything. Anything can happen, right? But if you're fairly confident that it's going to be a resilient stock, maybe it just stays where it's at, right? And it's got a yield in there of 3 or 4%. Well, that's a great deal when you're looking at a company that, yeah, a market where you can't get 3% on a 10-year, let alone a 30-year, let alone whatever you're talking about. Um, so that would be cool, man. I look forward to it. Folks, right on the front page, you can subscribe, whether it's a month, whether it's six months, whether it's a year. All of those come with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new signups. Great time to check it out. And, of course, the webinar tonight will be archived if you can't attend live. And you get a plethora of other archives workshops that Basil's got in there. I think there's four up there right now. There'll be the fifth one that he does tonight. So make use of that time. Sign up for the opening call, and we look forward to the show tonight, Basil. And I know, man, you you are doing triple duty today. So Basil's got his Tiger Technician's Hour at noon, folks, and then he's going to be filling in for Tom at 3 o'clock as well. So maybe you'll have to add another subtitle to that workshop, Basil, by the time you get to 4 or 5 o'clock as you break down this market. The pinch hitter. <laughs> right. Uh, so what else are you looking at, Basil, in terms of, you know, the, we, we kind of discussed Home Depot, Lowe's, Target. Uh, we got Fed minutes at 2 o'clock. Is that something that you really ever look to? I mean, Powell, of course, he's going to be in Jackson Hole. Kevin and I, I were think, talking about it, but what do you, what's your take on that? Over, over all the years that I've looked at this market intensely pretty much every minute of every day that I have a chance to, um, I, there'll be maybe two occasions where we've actually put on a position after the Fed meeting, and uh, it's been a very successful position. Most of the time, I felt that if I've had an update, especially after a Fed meeting, the very next day I could have got an even better price for whatever. Okay. So my, my, my thesis has always been that a market that is in a particular directional move won't change that directional move for more than a flurry on any news. Just, you know, that when Kennedy was shot, you know, the market pulled back, I think, with 15 points in those days. That was huge. Uh, a week later, it was it was going to all-time highs. Okay. So, you know, you can't, you can't rely on news for that. But what I am looking at, and the reason why I've called this a subtitle, No Rush, is that I'm looking at so many stocks. I mean, just let's take a great company like Caterpillar. Caterpillar is way down off its 173 January of 2018 high. It's down at 100, it went to 112 in December, bounces to 140s, and now it's trading at 118. It will come right at some point. So this is a market of patience, I think. Okay. Patience, folks, patience. Patience in a lot of things in life, Basil, is, is a great quality to have, for sure. Folks, we've got markets higher. Come on back. We're going to be talking with Ken, Teddy Kegstad. We're talking Forex after this break. Come on back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien joined by Basil Chapman this morning. We got the Dow up 204, S&P's positive by 20 right now, NASDAQ positive by 68 points. And before we jump over to Teddy, I'm going to real quick, folks, jumping back to that oil contract, because Basil, we got no move right off the bat, but man, oil just dropped about 60 cents in a heartbeat from 56.83. We're now trading at 56.19 on the heels of that EIA report, um, which is interesting in that we saw a draw of about 2.7 million barrels. The estimate was for a draw of about 1.9, so a little bit less oil than the market might have thought. That usually would indicate maybe a rise. Uh, in the price, but nonetheless, lower prices, 56.24 right now, and the price of that October crude. And the general market did pull back a little bit with that. And yes. that would match for sure. Well, with that in mind, folks, let's jump over to our man Teddy Kegstad, everyday forex dash trading dash unlocked, folks. You want to talk about forex? Let's jump over to our man Teddy Kegstad, see what we got going on. Teddy, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Morning, Basil. How are we good doing, man? Good morning to you. Doing very good, doing very good. It's been kind of a quiet week in the currencies because of the FOMC minutes that come out today in the Jackson Hole, Wyoming uh, symposium that's going on on Thursday and Friday. Yeah, so we get the minutes at 2 p.m. Eastern time, so a little bit more than about three hours from right now. The market might be kind of waiting for that. Since the open, we've had, you know, the indices sitting up between about eight tenths percent and one percent in the positive. And then Powell, of course, on um, Friday and later this week, Jackson Hole. Yes. And, uh, you know, the president being relentless this morning, edging him out, bringing his golf game into things with uh, Powell's putting or whatnot. Um, <laughs> so what are you looking for, Teddy, in terms of uh, would you do you like to, you know, play those for a trade? Are you going to wait and see that how that plays out? Or what are you what are you looking for in the end of this week in the in the Forex market and how that might affect things? 
Uh, well, right now I am definitely have a couple trades for you on the table. Okay. Uh, short term, we have a double top situation in the U.S. dollar Canada trade. It took a, a nice little high uh, uh, yesterday, and today it followed through with a nice little slide. So for a short term trade, uh, the trade was actually to get short yesterday after the close on the uh, U.S. dollar Canada. So it's kind of already absorbed a little bit, about a third of the move okay. for what I have for, for a target. Um, but if you're an aggressive bull, I think that yesterday's high is a good risk level right now for the short run because there was a, a little sell signal. Um, and this is a good thing because it's an indication of the dollar. Like we've been talking about a potential turn in the pound, at least to like slow down the slide from that uh, pound U.S. dollar trade. And now we're looking at where maybe the dollar index might be starting to get ready for a turn um, because of the signals that I'm about to tell you about. So okay. first is, is the dollar Canada. Now we have the Euro US dollar, which is um, gives, gave us a short term buy signal yesterday. Um, there's not much action today. I think that's because of the FOMC minutes and also because there is, hasn't been much of a range in the Euro period anyhow. Um, but I think that if the signal is solid and coincides with this other signal in the US dollar Canada, that means that dollar weakness is starting to show its signs in the majors and we should start to see a lift in the Euro and see also um, a lift in the Canadian dollar. And then we also have the pound. Um, now, uh, we know that yesterday, uh, Boris Johnson, the prime minister, he, pr he really put a, a line in the sand. Now, today he left for uh, Europe. He's going to spend some time in France. And then he goes off to Berlin to talk about the whole Brexit thing. Now, that as prime minister, this is his first move of overseas and going to do something. So now yesterday, and you can fact check this, I did. I found it all over social media. He made these, He put this out himself verbally and also in writing, and to quote, the ref referendum result must be respected. We will leave the EU on the 31st of October. This is verbatim what he said. So that means that the pound right now, I think, is where it didn't get a lift when he first became prime minister. Um, by him saying this, it, the October 31st is now a deadline I think we can count on. So I think that's gonna um, edge the dollar down. Um, so I don't think any numbers can really support the dollar right now unless there's some really really big change in perspective on something and I think we're gonna to start to see an edging of the dollar index coming off over the next like week. It's pretty remarkable how long we've been talking about this Brexit deal and you say October 31st folks it's August 21st that's barely 70 days which is nothing um, when you think about the ramifications that could have, I mean, I saw reports, uh, whether well, it was earlier this week, Teddy, talking about internal deliberations over in Britain, talking about some of the woes that they may deal with if they hit that hard Brexit. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe that's the line that they're going to take and just, you know, overcome those obstacles sure. as they hit them. Um, mm -hmm. Or maybe as you approach that deadline and there's two weeks out, right, maybe some of that rhetoric... Uh, begins to weaken. I don't expect that, but it'll be interesting to see as that deadline approaches, because at least I feel like um, that that deadline might be a deadline that finally is a deadline versus all those arbitrary deadlines that just got extended, extended, new prime minister, um, anything they could do to push that further into the future. But I think October 31st, right around the corner, we're going to find out one way or another and man, we might see some volatility as we really approach that oh, deadline. I definitely. I'm with you. I, I, think I just want to draw I just want to ask you, is there a level in the dollar where it would confirm for you that this is not just a short-term pullback in the dollar, but perhaps something deeper? Um, well, actually, I think what we have to really look at is the pound. I think that's going to be the indicator because through all this dollar strength, the euro has been in a sideways range trade for six months now, basically, um, sideways to lower at best, okay? Um, and it hasn't really reacted off of all of the news, all the things while many currencies have been trending. You look at the New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar, it is continuing its bearish trend and probably will until November because they have two more rate cuts on the table. So that's a, almost a guaranteed trend-wise. The U.S. dollar yen trade has been definitely bearish for a while. That's going to continue because the Bank of Japan is not going to, they're not changing their, their footing. There's, they drew a line in the sand a while ago. So, and, and here's the thing to really look at. The, the, the yen has been strong against the dollar for months. The trend is there. No one can deny that. The U.S. dollar Swiss, the trend is also there. The Swiss is strong. So if you have these two lesser major currencies that are strong against the dollar, and all of a sudden you start to have a leg up in the pound, the dollar has to come back. It has to start to correct. I see. So the pound for you right now, that's kind of the swing. Uh, that, that's the most important uh, currency that would actually be the influence either to confirm the rally in the, foreign, the other markets 
or it'll perhaps fail, and that'll right. be important as well. And the pound is already bottomed in other markets. Like if you look at the euro pound, the euro has been trending so hard against the pound for a while, and especially in the last month and a half. But markets come in like they or go out like they came in, come in. They made this blow off top in the euro pound, and now it's coming back on. That's an indication that this Brexit deal, it's coming to a head. I mean, the EU is now resorting to saying, well, if we have a hard Brexit, we're not going to give you a part of our blood supply. I think that's kind of a chokehold that you really want to go there. You're going to try and keep so, keep someone from uh, maintaining their own sovereignty by saying, well, we're going to cut off your blood supply. That's not an economic type of tactic at all. That's that's a totally different type of uh, tactic. Good point. Pretty remarkable. Folks, as a, and Teddy, as you've been talking about it, I've been jump, jumping over all these great charts. Folks, check it out, forex-trading-unlock.com, as you've been watching me jump through all these charts. They're great charts, Teddy, man, because I was just saying, you know, oh, I wonder if he's got the euro pound up there. Boom, there's the link right under there. You hit forex-trading-unlock, folks, and right at the top, you'll see forex, all that good information. Pull up those charts, and then that's pretty cool, man. You got them all matched up. And October 31st, Teddy, Man, we're going to have to get double interviews with you as we come up to those two weeks because, boy, oh, boy, we better have some uh, volatility, that's for sure. <laughs> Teddy, we appreciate it as yeah. always, man. We look forward to talking to you next Wednesday. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks, Thank you. Good Thank you, Teddy. Stay tuned. Basil and I are going to be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien joined by Basil Chapman this morning. And, man, we got a treat. Who do we got on the phone? We got our man Larry Pesavento. Larry, what's happening, man? Hey, hey looking good, Billy Ray. Looking forward to Basil's show tonight. Uh, it's a home run, folks. If you've never heard the man, you ought to listen to him because whenever he talks, he's got great information. So good luck, Basil, and knock him dead. Thank you. Larry, All right. Listen, thanks a lot, guys. We'll hear you tonight best, and talk that's to you tomorrow. Much appreciated, Thank you very much. Larry, thank you. In, yeah, man. you You're bet. Bye-bye. Folks, and you want to talk about good programs, Larry Pesamento as well kicks it off at 9 a.m., does a bang-up job. Check that out as well. And, Fabulous, yes. And, and to reiterate what Larry said, folks, 5 p.m. tonight, check it out on the front page of TFNN.com. We'll pull it up, the opening call. And Basil, we look forward to the webinar, man. I know you got a full plethora of programs going on today. I really appreciate you filling in for Tom. Of course, Tiger Technicians Hour at noon. He'll be back at 3 o'clock, folks. And then subscribers only, 5 o'clock tonight, right on the front page. Opening call, what stocks could lead the market higher after this correction has completed? And Basil's going to have a few subtitles that, as he breaks down this market uh, at Five o'clock, Basil. I'll be in there, of course, watching the webinar. I'll I'll be listening to that Tiger Technicians Hour, and uh, we appreciate the great work you do out there, man, and, and filling in for Tom. Thank you very much, Tom. I always appreciate being on with you. Me too, man. I look forward to it, folks. Stay tuned. We got Fast Market coming up next with Kevin Hinks, Alex Coffee. They're going to be talking earnings. We got a bunch of retail stocks. They're going to be talking Dick Sporting Goods. They're going to be talking L Brands. Then, of course, we got our man Basil Chapman coming up at noon. We got Fed Minutes at 2 o'clock. Basil's going to be in the saddle at 3. We got Steve Rhodes filling in for Tom at 4. And then don't forget that webinar live from 5 till 6 o'clock tonight. Dow Jones up 230. S&P's up 22. NASDAQ up 71 points. Stay tuned, folks. Fast Market coming up next. Thanks so much, Basil. Have a great one, man. Thank you, Tom. You too. Thanks, folks.